Hello, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. <clears throat> um, I'm uh, at the University of Ottawa in the uh, Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. And uh, today I want to give some of my updated views on abrupt uh, climate change. Uh, pardon the voice, <clears throat> I'm just recovering from a, uh, a bad cold and uh, I'm heading off to uh, Lima, Peru in a couple days to attend the COP20 uh, IPCC uh, climate change talks. It runs for two weeks, uh, the first couple weeks of December. Um, I'm fully accredited there um, with an NGO in uh, Ghana. Uh, certainly wouldn't want to uh, have a Canadian uh, flag <coughs> or a Canadian uh, flag symbol on my uh, you know, knapsack or anything like that at a climate conference. Very liable to get, <coughs> you know, rotten fruit uh, chucked at me uh, for doing uh, such a thing like that. Given Canada's status in the uh, international community on uh, climate change. So, <coughs> in the past, um, in a number of different blogs, uh, videos, etc., I made this, a couple statements um, on abrupt climate change. Uh, first of all, in the uh, paleo record, there's uh, many, many uh, cases where the temperature has risen extremely rapidly. So, uh, for example, five to six degrees um, in a decade or two. Um, this has happened, uh, you know, for example, uh, coming out of the younger, driest cold period. Um, in the Paleo Eocene Thermal Maximum, temperature rose 5 degrees C in 13 years. That's global average temperature. During the Dan Dansgaard Osher Oscillation period, temperature rose, you know, typically 5, 6 degrees in a decade or two, um, as even as high as 16 degrees Celsius in one case. But that was from an initial colder, that was from a colder state, about 5 degrees C cooler than we are today. Uh, so what's happening today, you know, the, the climate system is certainly capable of that 5 to 6 degree rise in temperature globally in a decade or two. So that would be a very abrupt change, it would be a very rapid change, um, nothing linear about it, very hard for society to adapt if such a thing like that occurred. Um, <clears throat> so what's really happening today? Um, it looks like the, um, the climate system is completely changing rapidly. Um, the whole uh, premise of my research is, you know, um, are we in early stages of abrupt climate change? I think we are, uh, but the jury, of course, is still out on the absolute answer to that. But um, some recent evidence seems to suggest that uh, that we are, and that, you know, it is very possible that the temperature, the average temperature on our planet could be, you know, could be, uh, you know, that five or six degrees warmer, you know, um, heading to, say, mid-2035. Um, that would be, you know, about 20, 19, 20 years from now, or 21 years from now. So, <coughs> um, the biggest, I mean, we, we, there's a lot of talk you know, a lot of people are starting to understand in the public and in the scientific community, less so in the scientific community, um, there's been about five peer-reviewed papers on the, on the, uh, uh, the connection between um, abrupt climate change, between Arctic amplification and uh, the uh, waviness and breakup of the uh, jet streams. Um, I don't know why there's such a... Um, well, it's very important, um, so that's probably why, you know, there's still a lot of scientists that say there's not enough data on it. I mean, the physics of it seems to indicate that, you know, if what we're heading to is more somewhat of an equalization of temperature with latitude in the northern hemisphere, as the Arctic amplification increases more and more, the Arctic warms up more and more, the equator's not changing much, so the temperature gradient is reduced, because the temperature rate gradient is reduced, the westward the west to east movement of the jet streams slows down, the jet, jets become much wavier, become much more determined by the land-sea contrast, 
Um, so we get swings like, um, you know, Ottawa being uh, almost 20 degrees Celsius uh, just yesterday, November 24th, when, they, when the, uh, the norm for this time of year is as high as one degree Celsius. That's a 19 degree rise um, for Ottawa and vast areas around, you know, in North America. Um, so a couple things, um, th this, this waviness of the jet stream is being discussed more as for its impact on extreme weather events like the California drought, severe flooding seen around the world, etc. And it's only going to get worse as the Arctic sea ice and snow cover decline increases more. The albedo, the overall reflectivity of the Arctic region as measured by Sears satellites, NASA satellites, has declined from about 52% to 48%. Um, and that's in about uh, 30 years, I believe. So, so this is a huge decline. It represents a huge absorption of a lot more energy in the Arctic, causing this Arctic amplification um, and the wavy jet streams and the rest of it. Also, there's less heat being transferred from the equator up to the North Pole by the ocean and atmosphere. So as a result, um, there's more going to the southern hemisphere, increasing the strength of the winds um, just um, north of Antarctica, around Australia, making record temperatures there and causing uh, a lot of waviness, um, causing an increase of the southern annular mode and an increase of sea ice, you know, of up to about one and a half percent per decade is being seen there. Um, people aren't attributing it to that yet, but, um, you know, that's a consistent, self-consistent picture that I see occurring. Um, and uh, so the other thing, so, so this, this waviness of the jets, it involves lots of cold, dry, uh, dry air from the Arctic moving southward, and it involves a lot of warm, moist air from south moving northward into the Arctic. So it's representing a huge heat flow um, up into the Arctic, the, uh, the uh, ridges of the jet streams, which are the warm, um, humid air going far north, and any time you get massive amounts of cold air coming south, that also represents a large positive heat flow northward. Um, and so what we're getting is all these mechanisms are feeding back, increasing the, um, in, uh, increasing the mixing of hot and cold air with latitude, um, kind of thermalizing the whole northern hemisphere in terms of temperature. Um, so this is definitely an abrupt change in the system if this is happening. A couple of very recent things that lead me to believe this also is the Pacific Ocean has been extremely warm, much warmer than normal in the, in the um, high uh, Pacific um, outside Bering Strait. So this is also consistent. In fact, this very warm water up there um, is also consistent with the picture that the water that would normally move up into the Arctic because of the temperature difference is now not going right up into the Arctic so much because of um, the Arctic warming by itself. So maybe some of it, more of it is getting stuck um, in, in the high Arctic region. Certainly the temperatures in Hawaii and so on, water temperatures have been very, very high. And also the temperatures off the west coast are affecting the fisheries and so on. But the other interesting thing that's just occurred very recently is a big blob of, or a big patch of very cold water in the North, North Atlantic. And if you look at the jet stream behavior, um, the jet stream normally comes up off the coast, the, the uh, coast and, uh, you know, um, from Florida and then up the coast. And then it crosses the Atlantic Ocean over to the UK and Western Europe where it causes a lot of warmth. And uh, this, this cold blob or slug of cold water over the Atlantic seems to be impeding the flow of that jet stream um, of, of the, uh, the jet stream, of the Gulf Stream um, water currents. Uh, so this is all the, uh, you know, when, because the Arctic's warming by itself from increased absorption of sunlight, there's less heat going up there in the atmosphere and ocean. So we're seeing all of these mechanisms occurring. So um, because these are massive system changes that we haven't seen before, um, I, I really, um, I, I'm leaning more and more to saying that uh, we are in um, 
that the abrupt changes that uh, of the system can 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 have are occurring now. I wouldn't be surprised if global average temperatures were five or six degrees higher, um, you know, in, in, in 10 or 20 years. Um, the reason I'm doing this video, um, you know, I, I saw a report from the International Energy Agency and they were talking about a six degree rise by 2050. Well, that's an abrupt change. That's 36 years from now, a six degree rise. So, you know, my idea that this could happen in 10 or 20 years um, is not so far-fetched or, or non-mainstream, uh, you know, anymore. People are converging more to my numbers all the time. Um, and, you know, if this type of abrupt change happens, then sure, why couldn't sea levels, uh, you know, rapidly, uh, you know, if the Arctic is much, much warmer, the melt on Greenland will be that much greater. See, you know, and I do have a video saying, you know, can sea levels rise seven meters by 2070? So, you know, these, these are kind of uh, worst case uh, situations, but they're becoming you know, more and more probable, you know, as we sit on our behind. Uh, so hopefully I can take some of these messages to the uh, IPCC, that at least a couple of press conferences already arranged, and uh, I'll be representing an NGO in Ghana to get this information across. So uh, thank you. The cats are uh, tired, so.